Hi, I'm DJ Ware. On this episode of the Cyber Gizmo, I have an update for the Snapdragon. One of my viewers yesterday posted a, a, a comment in the video where I was talking about kind of the what's going on now with with the Linux on Snapdragon. And so I have, and so he was telling me that he was able to get it up on vanilla uh, Linux. Uh, I think I'll get off my butt and go back and take a look at the uh, how well Ubuntu is doing with the, uh, uh, the their pre-release that they're working on. So anyway, that's what I did. I went over there and took a peek at what they were doing. And sure enough, they've made some progress. So I thought, well, you know, I've been able to boot into it. But I haven't been able to do much because the, the graphics wasn't working. The audio wasn't working. There, there was a lot of stuff that just were broken. <laughs> so, But, yeah, they've done quite a bit of work on it. And uh, I think probably the best thing to do is just kind of go over it today a little bit. Uh, again, I'm just, I don't have anything prepared. I'm just talking to you. Uh, so I have, I, I don't have a way to hook it up to the live video here so that you can I can type along and you can watch it. So I, what I did was I did a screen record on it and I'll put that in with this video. So let's take a look at, first of all, there's a, uh, you know, first, you know, fast fetch will show us that definitely it is running on a Asus Viva book. It's an S15. That's what I bought. Uh, it is Ubuntu 24.10, and the kernel is 6.11, which is the standard kernel that comes with it. So what did these guys do? Well, they've been working on the DTB. That's the, uh, that's the device uh, tree. So, yeah, that, that contains, that's the way they do their, on, on Snapdragon, that's how they do their uh, their devices when they're bringing it in. It's not actually part of the kernel. The, they, ins they will supply you with a baseline DTB for whatever machine they identify during the install. Currently, there's this list right here with, with, of machines that are what they considered working. Now, what I consider working is all the devices on the machine working, but that's not how they look at things. So they look at things as, do I have enough of it up that I can actually, you know, do something with the windows? Can I get, you know, a, can I set the screen display and all that? So that's how they seem to be doing it. But fractional scaling works on Whalen. And uh, also the uh, Adreno GPU is working as well, as you can see from, I did put up NVTOP. NVTOP is such a great tool. I mean, it works with all kinds of graphics cards, not just NVIDIA's, but it doesn't, it, it, there's some things, of course, it doesn't know because the graphics card is not an NVIDIA. So it doesn't know what frequency it's at, it doesn't know the temperature, it doesn't know the clock speed. Well, it does kind of know the clock speed, but it doesn't know what it's setting it to as it's running. So yeah, it, it, there's a few things that just don't work on NVTOP, but hey, you can see the amount of memory it's taken. And you can also see uh, the amount of processing that the GPU is doing, and that's great. I like that. So that's working. Uh, it is it is enhancing the ability of the of the uh, uh, of GNOME to be able to make the to display. You can see it's clearly using the GPU when it's drawing on the screen. So again, that's also good. However, when you go into uh, YouTube. And you want to use things like VP9, which is the default uh, encoder on YouTube. Yeah, it's dropping frames, uh, at least. And so I thought, okay, well, I'll just change the uh, frame size down. So I set, I set the, uh, I turned off the fractional scaling, and I, and it didn't give me a list. <laughs> so it didn't give me a list of anything other than what it was set to. I don't know if that's a bug. I don't know if I. You know, I need to restart, and then I'll see the li the full listing. I don't know. I just haven't delved into all of this yet. <laughs> so while I was making this video, this is uh, the future DJ. <laughs> so uh, while I was making the the uh, working on the video to edit it, I, I got to thinking. I forgot something that I should have told you. For those of you that are new to Linux, you're probably used to the commercial world, where you know, they have a release date, they push out whatever the product is. And usually it's polished to some degree and they try to minimize bugs. 
In Linux, because it's this open source, it's an open book. We have three phases in Linux that we go through in development. First is the crawl phase. And the crawl phase is where you just try to get things to work. You don't care how fast they are. You might have some major craters, some major bugs. You might have some just minor bugs, but you don't worry about those so much at this phase. Remember, you're, you're trying to correct the bugs that are preventing you from progressing on, but if there's misspelling mistakes on the screen, eh, okay, we'll fix that later. The next phase is once you're satisfied with the crawl phase and you think things are working, then you go to the walk phase. The walk phase is really where you're trying to learn, do I have anything that might be bottlenecking, might be, you know, some kind of major impediment to performance, or is this not going to work with some other package that is dependent upon my driver for it to work? So that's what the walk phase is about. And you get to see all that when you're up in this area at the edge of Linux uh, before, you know, you get your prepackaged uh, distribution. When you're dealing at this phase, I'm just trying to educate you. You have to re change your mindset from demanding that things work to, oh, my God, they actually got that to work. I'm impressed. That's kind of where we're at. The final phase is the run phase. The run phase is where you're in your final set of tweaks that you're doing to maximize performance. You're trying to get rid of hiccups, maybe drop frames on YouTube or some other thing that's happening to you that would be an annoyance to someone using this. It could be even you're running along for a while and all of a sudden the machine slows down and you're like, what? What happened here? <laughs> so, yeah, things like that you're trying to get rid of at that phase. When you're working, when you're working at this place, you, you know, you don't. You, I'm just trying to lower your expectations. That you're. This is not a perfect world here <laughs> when you're dealing with the development phase to get things working. This is where people break stuff and they talk to each other and they go, oh, I, yeah, this I saw this and this broke. They don't get mad at each other. They just, hey, I found this and I fixed it. Or, hey, I found this. Can you fix it? I mean, that's kind of the, it's just, it's just, it's friendly. It's not, it, and nobody's going to beat each other up over it. You know, this is just part of development. This has been all of two hours working on this. So, yeah, so, so. I, I, I feel like I've come pretty far in being able to get the damn thing up. So, yeah, it is running, and it's running pretty good. Um, the Wi-Fi is working. Bluetooth works. Uh, the battery after you – there's a uh, – on if you go to the website, and you'll see it here. If you go to the website, it'll tell you there's a post-processing step that they recommend that you do. And that is to extract the device drivers out of Windows. And then they take those and they'll create a DTB out of it and then install it in your boot directory so that when you re restart, you'll pick up device drivers that will work. You know, the, the problem is they can't distribute those, right? I mean, I, <laughs> there'd be all kinds of legal problems if they did that. Uh, it's a workaround. It, this is a testing platform and they're just making sure that once the real drivers are finished, that those will go into the DTB. Now, the DTB they provide you with the baseline is the work in progress that they've done on the drivers for that are open, open source drivers. So, yeah, so that, I mean, if you're worried about, you know, legal aspects and, yeah, that's okay. I mean, you, I'm not a lawyer. I'm not here to give you legal advice. But if you're worried about it, yeah, okay, then don't, don't do the extract. Um, but, uh, yeah, if you do that, then you'll get more functionality out of the machine. So what doesn't work when you get all this done? So your USB-A ports don't work. The HDMI port does not work. And the fan control, the, the fan is running at a fixed speed. It's not running high. It's not running low. It's just kind of in between there. Uh, it works. It boots. Uh, I haven't tested to see if I can go back to Windows yet. It what it so what here's how they recommend you do this uh if you 
insist on having BitLocker on the machine. And if you're traveling with your laptop very much, you should. But if you have BootLocker, what they suggest you do, and you want to keep it, is go into Windows and 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 slide the partition down to give you enough space for Linux. By default, they're going to want 42 gigs. I don't know why they, I, yeah, the, the number from <laughs> Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. Yeah, that's probably why they picked 42. But uh, yeah, so that's the number you can use uh, as a default for the low end. But then however much you think you're going to need, you might want to slide that down. And, and, and then that will be the partition that you install uh, Linux on. So the other way is you can turn BitLocker off and it'll do it for you and automatically. But it can't do it with obviously with BitLocker on because BitLocker has the drive encrypted and it can't see the partitions. Once you get that done, then you need to install a package called uh, QCOM Extract Firmware, I think it's called. Uh, we can check that, but I think that's what it's called. It's on their website. Uh, it tells you which package to install. That will then, it'll mount your Windows uh, data directory where your programs and everything is. And it will extract the drivers that it needs. It copies them over to Linux. And when it's all done, it says, hey, you need to reboot. And so you just reboot and uh, all these new things should come up and work. Yeah, it works. Uh, you can start playing with it. Uh, just remember that that this is not mainstream. Uh, my journey to get to Snapdragon has now begun. Uh, Linux has got enough. I can do compiles. I can start to do all kinds of things with it. So I should be able to do my testing and trying to see what, what kinds of things it'll do. In order for me to bring it live, though, I need the HDMI port. So I'm going to have to figure out something for that. Hope to see you the next time and bye for now.